what do you value as really important? What do you value and consider as this is really important? Think of several importance to you. Secondly, what does God value as important? Really important. Hopefully, the two come together or will come together. Those concerns that God values as really important, we will value as important. The two are together. We're beginning a series today in the Gospel of Mark, the second book of the New Testament. And even today in these first 11 verses, we're going to see four truths that are really important to God. And we trust these same four become very important to us. You may ask, why Mark? Out of all these books, Mark is a book of action. It is fast-paced. I like that. Each of the four Gospels are important, but yet how different they are. Think of Matthew. It begins with genealogy, and that's important. Name after name after name after name of genealogy. That's important for understanding who Christ is, genealogy. Luke, Luke the doctor, the physician, he gives us such important details of what it was like when the angel came to Elizabeth and her husband Zacharias, and the angel went to the shepherds to tell about this couple who were going to have a baby, and Dr. Luke tells us about the travel to Bethlehem and the angels speaking to those shepherds and the shepherds coming and goes into great detail of those specifics. That's Dr. Luke. Now John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John's the theologian, the philosopher, and we need both theologians and philosophers. He begins by saying, now listen, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Gives us great theology that we need. But Mark, (laughs) Mark is so different. He's a man of action. There's no slow mo with Mark. He's a man of facts, action. That term I use, slow mo, may be New to some of you, I've learned it from our children and grandchildren. Sometimes they'll send me videos, and they're in slow-mo. I like that. Whether it's the children singing or my wife entertaining them by dancing and carrying on. My wife's in Williamsburg, Virginia this morning, uh, worshiping Christ and hopes to come home tomorrow night. She's helping with grandchildren. But Mark's not slow-mo. He is fast action. He is fast pace. We see at the very beginning of Mark, baptism. Christ is an adult. He's already an adult. Right here in chapter 1, first verses, he's an adult. He's baptized. He begins doing miracles and teaching. A man of action. I like that. What? Are the values that are important to God and to us? Quickly, let's see these four and then look at them in some detail. In these four, we see, first of all, the Old Testament is important to Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is important to Christ. Is it important to you? Do you value it? God does. Secondly, baptism is important to Christ. It's so important. Not only did he teach it, but he received it himself. Baptism is important. Thirdly, repentance is important. What is repentance? It's seeing our sin and turning from it to Christ. That's important. Turning from going our own way 
to go the way of Christ. That's important. And then lastly, we see in these verses, humility is important to Jesus Christ. Humility is important to Christ. First, let's see the Old Testament is important to Christ. The Old Testament is important to Christ. Look, the very beginning of this great letter of action, in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Right here beginning, the Holy Spirit has Mark say, go back to the Old Testament. Go back to the book of Isaiah. It speaks of the one to come, Jesus Christ. Go back to the Old Testament. It points to the coming of Christ. Go, look. Look at, I, look at Luke 24, 44. Luke 24, 44. Here's Christ again emphasizing the Old Testament. He, Christ, said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Jesus says, go back to the Old Testament. Go back to those books of the law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They speak of him. Go back, he says. Go to the prophets. What was the message of the prophets? The long prophets, the short prophets. What did they talk about? They talked about him. He says, go to the book of Psalms. They all point to him. Do you value the Old Testament? Do you value it? Do you want to study it? Do you want to learn of Christ from the Old Testament? That's what Christ says to do. Go back. Know your Old Testament, for they speak of him. The Old Testament was very important to Jesus Christ, and I trust becomes important to us. Secondly, baptism. Baptism is important to Christ. Look at John in verse 4. John. John is the baptizer that came to prepare the way for Christ. So John appeared. He went out into the wilderness and he began baptizing and he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people heard about him, and they came out, and they wanted to be baptized by him in the river Jordan. And they did what? They confessed their sins. And Jesus himself was baptized. Jesus was without sin. Baptism is important. What is baptism? It's that outward sign that we want to be identified with Jesus Christ. That's what it is. It's a sign. It's an outward behavior that says we want to belong to Christ. We want Christ as our Savior. We want him as our Lord. We identify with him in the present and the future. We want to live for him. We're going to be different. We want to follow Christ. We want to obey Christ at all costs. Jesus himself. To identify with people, not to because he was a sinner. But the baptism and repentance and confession of sin. We confess our sin. We confess our need of Christ. Parents, when they bring their children, as we heard this morning, they're saying, our son, our daughter need Christ. They need to repent of their sin. They need to confess him. They need to believe on him. Folk in many parts of the world today, to identify with Christ in baptism will probably mean death in many places of the world today. In many Muslim nations, to be baptized, 
to identify with Jesus Christ in that outward sign of baptism. You're signing away your life. And we have dear ones who are ministering in those kind of nations. What is baptism? Look at it. What is it? From our catechism. I like our catechism. Our catechism is question and answer. Question and answer. Question and answer. Ask a question. Here's an answer. Here's a question. Here's an answer. I like the summary of what baptism is. Look at it. First of all, baptism is a sacrament. It's a sacrament. A sacrament is a holy ordinance instituted by Christ, wherein by sensible signs, Christ and the benefits of the new covenant are represented, sealed, and applied to believers. Baptism is a sacrament. What's a sacrament? A sacrament is something taught by Christ instituted by Christ, begun by Christ, wherein by sensible signs, something that appears appeals to our senses, something we can taste, something we can smell, something we can touch. It's a sensible sign. And that's what baptism is. And the Lord's Supper that we celebrate something we can taste, something we smell, something we can touch. We believe there are only two sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper. We believe there's only two instituted, begun, taught by Christ. Baptism is important. It's an importance for adults and youth and children. It's not just for infants. Oh, the joy of having adults baptized. It's a sign. Christ, you're the way. You're the truth. You're the life. We want to identify with you. We want to love you. We want to obey you. We want to trust you. Here we are. Here's our life. Take us. Baptism is important. But thirdly, we see repentance and confession of sin is important to Christ. Repentance, confession of sin. Look at John, verse 4. John, verse 4. John appeared. He baptized in the wilderness. He proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. All the country, all the people came and confessed their sin. How are you doing in confessing your sin? First to our Lord, confess your sins, but also confess them to one another that you may be healed. I believe that's a spiritual healing. He may do a physical healing, but it's certainly a spiritual healing. Confess your sins. We confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you confessing and admitting your sin first to our Lord? Are you telling Him you need Him and you're sorry? But though the joy of having at least one or two or perhaps several in your life with whom you are accountable, And confess your sins to one another. Confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. I'm so thankful for men in my life, of course my wife, that I can say, I've sinned. My arrogance, my pride, my selfishness, my greed, my envy, my jealousy, my anger. My fits of rage. My living for comfort, for security, for my own happiness. Please have someone in your life. Men to men, 
ladies to ladies, hopefully in your own marriage, if you're married, by which you can say, I struggle. I'm a sinner. I need help. If we cover over our sin, we will not prosper, says the Scripture. But if we confess it and renounce it, there's mercy. There's mercy. Oh, the joy of having someone share their struggles. Embarrassed to share their struggles. And I can say in my heart, hallelujah. (laughs) Mercy. Mercy is on the way. Because you're you're not hiding it. You're confessing it. You're admitting. Oh. Confession, repentance is very important. And then lastly, look. Just from these first 11 verses. The Old Testament is important. Baptism is important. Repentance, confession of sin is important. And thirdly, humility is really important. Look at Mark telling us. I love it. Verse 7. Mark 1, verse 7. And Jesus preached. John here. John preached saying. This is what John said when he was attempting to prepare the way for Christ. John said, after me comes he who is mightier than I. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John, by the Holy Spirit, was a man of humility. John went about preaching of Christ, such humility. See what he says? Of Christ? I'm not even worthy to take the form of a servant. I'm not even worthy to be a slave. That was the job of a slave. To take the sandal off, to untie, to unleash, to clean the master's feet, to wash them. I'm not even worthy to do that. The Holy Spirit working such humility in John. I'm not worthy. Humility is important to Christ. It's throughout the scriptures. It's throughout the Old Testament. It's throughout the New Testament. Look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Look at what God is saying to his people. Are you one of the sons? Are you one of the daughters of God through Christ? Are you turning from your sin? Look what God says to his people. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, God says, If my people, those who are called by my name, those who identify with me, what are we to do? How are we to live before one another? God's people, called, chosen, elected by him, humble ourselves and pray. And seek his face. And turn from our wicked ways. Then, then I will hear from heaven. And forgive their sin. And heal their land. It begins with us. It's so easy for me to criticize you. Or another. Or our government. Or other people. And we need to correct each other. And our government needs correcting. But do we say it with humility? Do we say it with humility? I am the worst of the sinners. I'm the least of all saints. The Holy Spirit uses that kind of humility 
to change people. God is first looking to us who he calls his own to speak truth in love and in humility. Turning from our ways and crying out for one another, crying out for our government, crying out for world leaders to know Christ. Humility is important to Christ. Look at 1 Peter 5, 6, where our Lord says to us, humble ourselves and stay there. I have to ask for humility throughout the day, every day, every day, throughout the day, because I'm so arrogant. I want to live for the applause of people, your applause, the applause of others. Arrogance. God hates. Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time, He will lift us up. Humility is important to Christ. And Jesus says in Matthew 23, 12, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. When we exalt ourselves, he's going to humble us. That can be very, very embarrassing and very painful. But it's because he loves us. But if by the Holy Spirit we can humble ourselves through the Holy Spirit, somehow he makes much of Christ. What's our application? How should this change us the rest of our lives? I believe, first of all, to thank our Lord that the Old Testament is important, that it points to Christ. Thank our Lord that baptism is important. Thank Him for that gift of baptism, the gift, the privilege to repent of our sin. That holy hatred of sin. And that he tells us humility is important. Begin there with sincere thankfulness. And then let's ask him. Let's ask him to increase and grow our appreciation for the Old Testament. And give yourself to reading and studying and learning with others. Not just isolated, but with others of the wonderful truths of the Old Testament because they point to Christ. They point to Christ. Secondly, baptism is important. Is it important to you? Is it something you need to do? Because of the teaching of Scripture? The example of Christ himself going through baptism? Is it something you need to do? Thirdly, pursue confessing sin. Not only to our Lord, but if there's no one in your life with whom a man to man, lady to a lady, or a small group, have that have that joy, that freedom. It is so free. For years I would not confess my struggles and my sins with others. I was living in bondage. But all oh, the freedom. Humbling, humiliating, embarrassing, free. Have someone or some ones in your life of which you're honest. Confessing your sin to each other that you might experience that healing. And then lastly, pursue humility at all cost. Again, our Lord uses other people to humble us who can speak truth into your life. Speak truth. 
Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up. Please have that honest relationship with others. At least one who will hold you accountable. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, says Scripture. Ah, the joy. The joy of the gospel. And what's the gospel? That's how Mark begins the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Here's the gospel. Jesus Christ is God, man. Perfect deity, perfect human. God became a human. He came, he lived that perfect life. That's good news. It's good news that he willingly let those soldiers arrest him and abuse him and humiliate him. It's good news that he went to the cross, was crucified. It's good news that God placed all the sin and punishment and judgment that Christ did not deserve, but Christ took it on behalf of everyone the Father has given to him. That's good news. All the punishment, all the judgment, all the wrath of God on behalf of everyone the Father's given to you. That's good news. And it's good news that he was buried. He descended into hell. Hell is real. And Christ took hell, that place of torture and torment, upon himself that he did not deserve. On behalf of all of those the Father gives to him through his resurrection. That's good news. Someone will pay for our sin. Either we will or Christ on your behalf is willing and able. He's willing, he's able. As we turn from going our own way and follow the way of Christ by his resurrection, his resurrection, his resurrection, and ascension back to the Father. That's good news. That's the message of Mark. The gospel of Jesus Christ. May he make us hungry. Spiritually hungry to know Christ and to make him known. Will you pray that? Lord, let us know you and make you known. Father, Christ never sinned. And yet he willingly became sin on behalf of all of those you've given to him that we become his holiness. We become as he is to you. May we believe it. May we live it. May we know Christ and make him known. Father, those who are not yet in the family today, will you breathe life into them? Breathe life into them. Today is the day. Today is the day of salvation and adoption into your family through the living and resurrected Christ. For those of us who are yours, may we in humility now grow and mature and the grace and knowledge of Christ. But not just us, Father. The dear ones of Costa Rica, the nations, convert, save, mature to the praise of your Son in whose name we pray. Amen.